Our next speaker is Unji Amy Kim, and she's going to talk to us about um, some indigenous perspectives on science and science learning. Amy. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yunji Amy Kim. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Integrated Studies in Education. Before going further, I wish to acknowledge that we are standing on the unceded territory of Mohawk people, and I'm not indigenous, but stand here as an ally. As an immigrant in Canada, I have been intrigued by the experience, experiences and the status of indigenous peoples in Canada. Because of my passion and interest in, in science education, I have, been, I have been particularly interested in indigenous students' experience in Canada's mainly Eurocentric educational system. My current doctoral project focuses on studying indigenous representation in science curricula and other various educational policies in multiple Commonwealth countries, namely Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. I'll be analyzing various educational documents and interviewing um, educational policymakers in each country in order to investigate how historical, political, and um, social discourses have, have influenced the construction of indigenous representation in educational uh, documents. I also plan to work with indige indigenous scholars and science educational consultants to provide recommendations for integrating indigenous knowledges and cultures in science education without misrepresenting and appropriating them. Okay, it's actually getting nervous. It's like, okay. <laughs> Okay, with the spread of globalization, the economy of nation states world, around the world are becoming increasingly interdependent and competitive. Success in science education is becoming more crucial within this global economy, and current science education curricula in these countries, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, cater to government's democratic agendas of developing informed citizens who are um, prepared to deal with science-related social issues and to prepare stronger students in STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. In this context, educational success in the field of science and technology is strongly linked with the uh, nation's economic well-being and security. Among East OECD countries, Canada continues to be among the top performers in reading, mathematics, and science in PISA, which is Program for International Students Assessment. However, the low achievement and participation of Aboriginal students in science classes has been continuously reported by many educational agencies and scholars, and Australia and New Zealand demonstrate similar trend. To alleviate this situation, the three countries in question have been working towards creating educational policies that includes indigenous perspectives in public education. These three countries are also considered as exemplar for other Commonwealth countries regarding indigenous students through various policies addressing the schoolings of significant indigenous populations. Examining the current status and treatment of indigenous pop, uh, perspectives in these countries is critically important to develop a comprehensive understanding of the ways in which uh, indigenous cultures and perspectives are being included in educational curricula and policies, particularly as, as these relate to science education in this global society. Canada continues to thrive in, in its economy and education in global world, in particular with, with, with regards to both science and education, uh, sorry, with regards to both science and indigenous education, we are considered as a leader and this is very exciting. However, there has been ongoing disparity in science education outcome for indigenous students in Canada, as well as misrepre misrepresentation and appropriation of indigenous cultures and knowledges within mainstream educational system, which contributes to perpetuating negative stereotypes of indigenous people held by non-indigenous educational administrator and student. In response to shark future challenge question, what knowledge will Canada need to thrive in an interconnected, evolving global landscape? I suggest that it is now time for us Canadians to respect and value diverse knowledges and experiences of Indigenous peoples of Canada in the context of contemporary science education. Indigenous peoples' knowledge and experience are gaining much um, recognition and attention from both government and various academic education fields, including resource management and ecology. 
Although scientifically and technologically driven society worldwide are advocating scientific literacy for all students, indigenous students are continue to be underrepresented within STEM fields and suffer from negative stereotypes held by non-indigenous peoples. To learn and understand indigenous knowledges and experiences in the contemporary science education classroom, Canadians will gain much better understanding of our nature and history. This will help us create better learning environments for indigenous students in, in science education, which would in turn will help Canada, Canada to grow stronger as a whole. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Amy? Paul. That's a re really interesting initiative. Can I pull your talk together with the talk we heard earlier about, earlier about law and religion? Okay. Um, where uh, the first thing that uh, you know, if one hears about how you get people in, in the law and people in the various churches mm -hmm. to work together, or scholars on either side to work together, um, it'll have to be a process of, of each of them opening up to a degree uh, learning about different forms of knowledge and different methodologies. Is that what you have in mind when you talk about bringing together science education and, and indigenous culture and, and indigenous forms of knowledge? Thank you so much for the question. That's actually my evolving stance when it comes to integrating indigenous knowledge within mainstream science education. Um, it is true that both sides actually has to work together and then I'm a huge advocate when such initiative is undertaking that we need to make sure that indigenous voice is there. So indigenous scholar and consultants has to be in there when developing educational policies and curricula. Uh, with regards to diverse knowledge and methodology and stuff, there are two different stances within science education. One is, well, we cannot, like I think Greg talked about digital literacy and we talk about scientific literacy and it, Western modern science is the sort of like universal way to go and then, you know, with the technology, I, I mean, developing, I guess you cannot argue with that. So one stance is that, yeah, bringing this cultural aspect will actually help indigenous students and this initiative is not for all Canadians but indigenous students' sake. But my stance is that um, indigenous knowledge and experience is actually really complementing with the Western modern science. And then there's actually a lot of research going on in the field of ecology and anthropology that are actually bringing this worldview and methodology together to create some sort of new understanding of nature. And that's how I envision our science education too, because I feel like we are very focusing on only one type, type of knowledge. I think uh, Carlos talked about you know, professor knowing one thing. I feel like that's how we're taking our science education to be, it's just one way of thinking. Um, just bringing different diverse uh, worldview and knowledges will actually help our students to actually see world in different light and gain much better understanding. Is, did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Or you can have this one, your call. There. Hi, um, thanks for that. That was a really great talk. Um, I went to a talk by Audra Simpson, uh, who's a, a Mohawk uh, scholar at Columbia, a few weeks ago. And it was, the talk was called Reconciliation and Its Discontents. And um, today we're talking a lot about knowledge production, or I should have talked a little bit more about it, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'm wondering, so I'm wondering if there might be something that we can bring to the table here about a healthy antagonism between different sorts of, a, of knowledge. Um, and is there such a thing as, as having some sort of healthy antagonism, say, be, between indigenous forms of knowledge and Western scientific modes of knowledge? Does that make, does that question so make sense? So you're asking if there's any better way to... No, I'm basically asking if... Yeah. Um, if that's indeed sometimes a good thing, to have um. that kind of... <laughs> it feels like my PhD dissertation defense right here. Um, good question. Um, that's, that is actually the reason why uh, I changed my project. My 
shark funded project is actually nothing related to looking at document analysis and you know looking at the view it was actually bringing indigenous knowledge and then you know mainstream science together and how students learn about doing it and how teachers actually feel about it but i get into the question is it really beneficial for our society or especially for indigenous people because maybe they might not want to their share knowledge because it's really very personal to them and then to get to be shared at all like to non-indigenous people is it really necessary and it is really beneficial and then is it also creating another door for misrepresentation of indigenous people so to answer your question i don't know i'm actually baffling with that question at the same time so thank you <laughs> yes please join me in thanking amy